Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to ICICI Lombard General Insurance Company Limited's Q2 and H1 FY24 earnings conference call. From the senior management, we have with us today Mr. Bhargav Das Gupta, MD and CEO of the company, Mr. Gopal Balachandran, CFO and CRO, Mr. Sanjeev Mantri, Executive Director, and Mr. Alok Agarwal, Executive Director. Please note that any statements, comments are made in today's call that may look like forward-looking statements are based on information presently available to the management and do not constitute an indication of any future performance as future involves risk and uncertainties which could cause results to differ materially from the current views being expressed. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star 10 zero on the touchstone phone. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Bhargav Das Gupta, MD and CEO, ICICI, Lombard General Insurance Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Zico, and uh, good evening to each one of you. Thank you for joining the earnings conference call of ICICI Lombard General Insurance Limited Company for Q2 and H1, FY24. Let me give you a brief overview of the industry trends and developments that we have witnessed in the past few months. Post this, our CFO, Mr. Gopal Balachandran, will share the financial performance of the company for the quarter and the half year ended September 30, 2023. The global economy is experiencing a loss of momentum. However, the Indian economy is gaining strength led by domestic drivers such as private consumption and fixed asset investments by public sector capex. The southwest monsoon rainfall recovered during September. However, it ended below the long period average. The manufacturing and services PMIs and other high-frequency indicators ex exhibited a robust expansion during this quarter. On the demand front, urban consumption is buoyant, while rural demand is showing some signs of re revival. However, the current geopolitical conditions and higher interest rates in the advanced economies can impact global and domestic economic growth negatively, and we have to be watchful of the same. For the quarter, as per data published by CM, the new private car sales continue to de deliver robust growth year-on-year. The two-wheeler sales registered moderate growth for the quarter and in terms of volume still remains below the pre-pandemic levels. The commercial vehicle growth was driven by growth in infra and other core right sectors. Health insurance continued to deliver robust growth, growth, remaining the largest contributor to overall growth. The commercial segment witnessed growth in line with the current market environment. We remain optimistic that the industry will continue to grow given the favorable macros, regulatory changes, low penetration, and relatively positive consumer sentiment. Speaking of the performance, the general insurance industry delivered a GDPI growth of 14.9% for the first half of this year over the first half of last year. Excluding the crop insurance, the growth is at 18% for the same period. Overall, the underwriting performance worsened with a combined ratio of the industry at 113.3% for Q1 FI24, as against 111.4% for Q1 FI23. For motor business, while the combined ratio continues to remain elevated, the combined ratio for the industry improved to 120.1% from Q1 2024, as against 124.5% for Q1 2023. Moving to the business numbers for us in Q2 FI 2024, the company grew at 17.4% as compared to the industry growth of 12.5%. 12, 12 in terms of growth for key segments during the quarter, property and casualty line of business grew at 17.2%, which was higher than the industry growth of 8.6%. Further, during the quarter, we accreted market share across all segments, such as fire, marine, engineering, and liability. In motor, our growth for the quarter was 10.9%, as against the industry growth of 13.9%. The growth in motor segment was aided by robust growth of 27.6% in the new private car segment. The private car mix stands at 51.8% for, for this quarter. While the competitive intensity in the motor segment remained elevated, we continue our focus of developing a quality portfolio based on granular data. We continue to rebalance our portfolio, resulting in commercial vehicle mix at 22.1% and two-wheeler mix at 26.1% for quarter two of this year. 
We also continue to harness our digital capabilities in building claims efficiency in motors. In Q2 FI24, through our preferred partner network, PPN network, we were able to service 63% of our non-OEM claims, up from 44% in Q2 of 2023. The health segment continues to be the fastest growing segment for the industry. During this quarter, we grew at 20.3%. As a result of our continued investment in retail health distribution, we have grown in line with the industry at 18.7%. This was driven by growth in business source to the retail health agency vertical of 21.7%. I would also like to share that our one-stop solution for all insurance and wellness needs, I'll Take Care app, has surpassed, surpassed 6.9 million uh, user downloads till date. The incremental download for the quarter was 1.3 million. For Q2 of FI24, the premium source through I'll Take Care app contributed to 884.57 million to the overall GDP reflecting a 3.5 times increase year on year. We have been updating you about our digital business initiatives like Digital One and I'll Take Care, which we've been driving in an agile manner. We are now scaling these agile models to business lines across the company, completely redefining the ways of working and the business processes. Coupled with the transformation of the core system, we expect this to be a key driver for our future growth as a digitally empowered insurance company. As you are all, uh, you may be aware, I have decided to pursue an overseas opportunity after spending over 14.5 years with ICSA Lombard. It has been a wonderful journey for me and I'm grateful for the collective support of all our stakeholders, our employees, customers, channel partners, analysts and shareholders. We have made large strides in the industry and made IL a much loved brand, brand as India's largest private sector GI player. I take this opportunity to thank all of you for your support and hope you will extend the same support as I pass on the baton to my dear colleague, Sanjeev Mantri. Sanjeev has been with the ICSA group for over 20 years. Sanjeev has played a stellar, stellar role in terms of his achievement within the company. He spearheaded the retail division as an executive director where he was leading distribution of products across agency, bank insurance, direct and alternate channels. He was also in charge of the strategy, products, pricing, marketing and corporate communication verticals at ICSA Lombard. I am con convinced that ICC Lombard will continue to be a strong force of positive change in the industry under his leadership. Over to you, Sanjeev. Uh, thank you, Bhargav. Your leadership is an inspiration for all of us, and your stellar record over the last 15 years has left an indelible impact on the organization and the industry at large. We are excited for you and the opportunities that lie ahead, and wish you the very best. I am keenly looking forward to taking the journey ahead and we rely heavily on the support of all our stakeholders. These are interesting times for the GI industry, and we are very well positioned to capitalize on this. I look forward to meeting and interacting with each one of you personally. We will continue to remain focused on our overall philosophy of balancing growth and profitability. I will now request Gopal to take you through the financial numbers for the recently concluded quarter and half year. Thanks, sir. Uh, good evening to each one of you. I will now give you a brief overview of the financial performance of the recently concluded quarter and half year. We have uploaded the results presentation on our website. You can access it as we walk you through the performance numbers. The gross direct premium income of the company was at Rs. 124.72 billion in H1 FI24 as against Rs. 105.55 billion in H1 FI23. A growth of 18.2% as against industry growth of 14.9%. Excluding crop, GDP of the company was at 17.6%, which was in line with industry growth of 18% in quarter 2 FY24. GDP was at Rs. 60.86 billion in Q2, as against 51.85 billion rupees in Q2 FY23, a growth of 17.4%. This growth was higher than the industry growth of 12.5%. Our GDP growth during the quarter was primarily driven by growth in the preferred segments. The overall GDP of our property and casualty segment grew by 17.2% at 14.76 billion rupees in quarter 2 FY24, as against rupees 12.59 billion in quarter 2 FY23. On the retail side of the business, GDP of the motor segment was at rupees 21.38 billion in quarter 2 FY24, as against rupees 19.28 billion in Q2 FY23, registering a growth of 10.9%. The advanced premium numbers was at rupees 32.89 billion as at September 30, 2023, as against Rs. 32.17 billion as at March 31, 2023. GDP of the health segment was at Rs. 13.62 billion in Q2 FI24, as against Rs. 11.32 billion in Q2 FI23, registering a growth of 20.3%. 
Our agents, which included the point of sale distribution count, was at 122,461 as on September 30, 2023, up from around 1,17,149 as on June 30, 2023. GDP of the retail health segment grew by 19%. Group health segment, that's the corporate employer employee segment, grew by 20.6% during the quarter. The bank assurance and KRG group grew at 24.3% this quarter. During the quarter, our business source through our Digital One team grew by 26.7%. Overall, our digital focus has enabled us to increase our digital revenues, which includes the IL Take Care app, business to rupees 3.66 billion, which accounts for 6% of our overall GDP for the quarter. Resultantly, the combined ratio was 103.7% for H1 FY24, as against 104.6% for H1 FY23. Excluding the impact of CAT losses of rupees 0.83 billion in H1 FY24 and rupees 0.28 billion in H1 FY23, the combined ratio was 102.7% and 104.2% respectively. Combined ratio was 103.9% in quarter 2 FY24 as against 105.1% in quarter 2 FY23. Excluding the impact of CAT losses of rupees 0.48 billion in Q2 FY24 and rupees 0.28 billion in Q2 FY23, the combined ratio was 102.8% and 104.3% respectively. Our investment assets rose to rupees 453.12 billion as at September 30, 2023, up from rupees 449.05 billion as at June 30, 2023. Our investment leverage net of borrowings was 4.07 times as at September 30, 2023, as against 4.16 times as at June 30, 2023. Investment income was at rupees 17.59 billion in H124, as against rupees 13.94 billion in H1 FY23. On a quarterly basis, the investment income was at rupees 9.36 billion in Q2 FY24, as against rupees 7.39 billion in Q2 FY23. Our capital gains, net of impairment on investment assets, stood at rupees 2.87 billion in H1 FY24, as compared to rupees 1.43 billion in H1 FY23. Capital gains net of impairment on investment assets stood at rupees 1.65 billion in Q2 FY24 as compared to rupees 1.11 billion in Q2 FY23. Our profit before tax grew by 19.4% at rupees 12.84 billion in H1 FY24 as against rupees 10.75 billion in H1 FY23. Whereas PBT grew by 25.3% at rupees 7.64 billion in Q2 FY24 as against rupees 6.10 billion in Q2 FY23. Consequently, profit after tax grew by 3% at rupees 9.68 billion in H1 FY24, as against rupees 9.40 billion in H1 FY23. PAG degrew by 2.2% at rupees 5.77 billion in Q2 FY24 from rupees 5.91 billion in Q2 FY23. Operator request has been initiated. If you'd like to cancel this request, please press star zero again. 2% in H1 FY24 and 24.8% in Q2 FY24. Return on average equity was 18% in H1 FY24 H1 FY23. The ROE for quarter 2 FY24 was 21.1% as against 24.5% in quarter 2 FY23. Solvency ratio was at 2.59 times as at September 30, 2023, as against 2.53 times as at June 30, 2023. Continued to be higher than the regulatory minimum requirement of 1.5 times. The board of directors of the company has declared interim dividend of rupees 5 per share for H1 FY24, as against rupees 4.5 per share for H1 FY23. As I conclude, I would like to reiterate we continue to stay focused on driving profitable growth, sustainable value creation, and safeguarding the interest of policyholders at all times. I would like to thank you all for attending this earnings call, and we will now be happy to take any specific questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles.
Our first question is from the line of Avinash Singh from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, best message to you, Vargo, for your future endeavors, and congratulations to Sanju on his new role. Uh, uh, good set of performance. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, first one, uh, I mean, uh, on your motor side, of course, uh, you c commented about the competitive intensity, uh, but whatever I see incrementally in your uh, quarter two, overall motor profitability seems to be uh, quite good for you. Yet you remain sort of uh, very, very guarded with the motor. I mean, so why such, uh, I would say, the guarded approach, even when profitability uh, seems to be suggesting that, okay, uh, things are better than what they were a few quarters back. So that is on your uh, entire uh, strategy around motor, because even in motor CV, you have started to sort of uh, uh, take a bit of uh, more business, but again there, you have, it seems that, okay, you are sort of uh, trying to slow down. So on, on overall motor, I would like to understand the philosophy, and on the same point, now I guess... Uh, uh, if I understand the regulation correctly, now uh, even motor TP, uh, technically a commission is sort of a possible because, I mean, the uh, business line-wise uh, commission caps are gone. So what is sort of a practices you are witnessing in the uh, market as far as motor is concerned? So that's on motor. And on health, uh, I of course, uh, I see that, okay, uh, the uh, results are coming from your focus on agency and that sort of a, uh, leading to sort of a growth in retail. Yet if I see because you are growing... Uh, strongly in the group both on the banker side as well as the employer-employee. Uh, your uh, mix is shifting again more towards uh, group. I mean, of course, uh, the banker is largely retail, I understand. Yet I'm saying that on your individual side, uh, I mean, is that growth still a bit you are calibrated or why? I mean, uh, uh, because on the group uh, employer employee side, if I understand, the price hike is now behind. So it would be largely kind of a volume-led growth. So that growth is strong. Banker growth is strong. Is I mean, so on the pure pure retail, uh, why sort of a, a bit of a, a slower as per your own experience? So these two questions. Thank you. Uh, thanks, and uh, maybe Sanjeev can uh, answer the question more than the retail. Yeah, sure. So uh, th thanks, Avinash. Uh, Clearly, from a motor perspective, as you rightly said, uh, there are enough and more tailwinds available at the industry level, and we are well set to capitalize. Uh, in a way, in your question itself, I see the answer uh, that uh, we are able to drive it profitably because we have kept ourselves calibrated. And we have also always maintained that we will move where we see an opportunity in terms of profit pool. Uh, if you look at our own uh, configuration of motor portfolio overall, you will see that the CV portfolio has marginally gone down in terms of a contribution in H1 of 23.4, it moved to 21.6. And we have grown on private car and two-wheeler as a company. Uh, if you ask me in terms of the view that we really expect ourselves, uh, we, we would continue to exert what is required. Uh, but if we see intensity, which is uh, in our mind uh, not working out overall, we will probably be attacked cautious in terms of driving it. So overall, uh, our plan of uh, being uh, uh, competitive and being in this place, because this is where our key distribution is, we will continue to exert ourselves as a team. Uh, on the health part which you spoke about in terms of growth coming primarily from group health uh, rather than retail, uh, if you see our industry largely has been on the retail side and there you will see a delta over industry growth of 2%. Uh, group has we always maintain that we go in strategically. If we see that we are able to uh, see some sanity in terms of pricing, we go in deep. That's what we did in quarter one. But in quarter two, if you see, we have grown rather subdued vis-a-vis -vis the market. Uh, that plan per se for us as a company uh, will not change. But our trajectory on the retail side is far more permanent, and you will see us doing much better. There is a marginal improvement in uh, market share, but I would not like to read too much into that because over a period of time we would do uh, much better, and we continue to stay invested as far as health agency is concerned. Uh, yeah, thank you. And that question regarding uh, uh, you know uh, current practices around commissions in motor, because I mean technically now I mean one can pay commissions on motor TP as well. So what sort of a market? I mean post the sort of a, you know basically the commission caps are uh, going to UM cap. What kind of a uh, market practices you are seeing as far as the payouts are concerned? So, so Avinash, uh, clearly we spoke about the industry level numbers on motor and we see a marginal improvement in the overall combined ratio from 124 is moved to 120. Uh, frankly speaking, there is not too much you can read in those numbers as far as 
this uh, you know this point of time even on expense of management while it does come in you see almost 50% of the company being more than the limit which is there which is stated uh, have we seen uh, uh, overall uh, rationality prevailing across uh, frankly speaking the industry itself is adjusting adjusting to it at this point of time and over a period of time i do believe that uh, you will see far more rationalization than what's happened now and we we do expect steadily to come in by quarter 3 or quarter 4 in overall from an overall perspective okay thank you thank you thank you our next question is from the line of shreya shivani from clsa please go ahead yes uh, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on a good set of numbers uh, so so on the coming back on the motor book i uh, wanted some more understanding on uh, the loss ratio improvement that has happened in 1h versus 1q uh, i know you don't want us to look at on look at loss ratios on quarterly basis but if uh, even even the 1h numbers look quite good so that would be one question uh, second is on the uh, monthly performance so uh, while i understand your monthly performances do vary but if you can give us some color in uh, understanding what specifically happened in probably august and september because till july you guys were had a very strong run rate of about 20% so uh, any color now around what happened and uh, any growth outlook that you can Uh, give and uh, sir, sir, one more question. Third question, probably uh, you've launched a new product with ICICI Pro Life, the health and protection product uh, management mentioned in the conference call yesterday. So, if you can give us some understanding of the economics of such a product, you know, uh, premiums, uh, the way uh, uh, partnership with ICICI Pro works out. I'm assuming this will get sold on the ICICI back platform. So, some color on that. Yeah. Uh, so, so share. Uh, I think on the first one. I think if you look at uh, uh, on the loss ratios for motor, um, I think you're right. I think we keep saying that uh, you should never look at numbers uh, over quarters or even let's say even on a financial year basis because some of these lines will obviously kind of start to exhibit uh, outcomes over a relatively longer period of time, particularly in the context of motor third party. Uh, having said that, I think when you look at even for let's say the half year. Uh, on motor OD specifically, in general, what we have talked about is the portfolio loss ratio should kind of range between the 65 to 70 percent kind of threshold on motor own damage. Uh, for the half year, I think that number is at let's say 65 percent or thereabout. But that's the range at which you would possibly see, depending on what kind of a business mix that we write in terms of whether we are able to relatively pick up pick up a higher proportion of uh, new. or let's say relatively what kind of proportion are we able to write in the context of the uh, older portfolio so that's broadly the range at which we will be able to operate at within quarters obviously the loss ratios will undergo a change but that's the range that we are comfortable with in so far as uh, the own damage book is concerned on third party again the point is still the same i think while for the quarter you would have again seen the numbers slightly better or let's say even on a half yearly basis uh, i think the number stands at about 66% but these are experiences that one should logically again look at uh, over relatively longer periods uh, and also to the fact that uh, depending on what kind of a mix of business that we write in terms of private car two wheeler and cv and that's something that we keep calibrating from time to time corresponding to which you could possibly see a change in the uh, loss ratio uh, experience uh, but otherwise there is nothing specific to call out in the context of let's say uh, the uh, quarter two numbers having said that i think what we also keep doing is uh, given the fact that from a reserving perspective generally we have tried to be prudent at all points of time that philosophy still continues to remain the same uh, even as we write whichever portfolio of the book but over a period of time as you would have seen some of our experiences have actually started to turn out to be much much positive and let's say what our initial estimates have been so that will obviously get calibrated from time to time but otherwise in so far as the over portfolio is concerned it's purely a function of what kind of mixes big of business that is that we are able to write just to add to a point that gopal made is that uh, the way we look at business is on a combined basis not just loss ratio uh, and overall you should study your numbers on a combined perspective because certain businesses may have higher expenses uh, you know lower loss ratio and vice versa 
So as a as a team, we look at overall combined as a as an object. Yeah. Uh, Simply for this. For this uh, combo product uh, that got mentioned, yes, we are very excited. We have uh, taken the term and the uh, CHI product of ours and given a combo, uh, combined offering to our customers through our agency channel. Uh, if you look at it, uh, Pru has a very decent agency practice and we have very decent bankation practice, and there was. Uh, a gap which needed to be filled. We have uh, created this product line to, you know, uh, leverage on each other's distribution. And as per the regulatory environment that is there, it's uh, something which is a very feasible option. We have gone ahead and done this uh, partnership with them, and we expect this product to uh, probably ramp up in time to come. Uh, to be very honest, our agents. Uh, Will require a bit of a training and process. It will come with a lag uh, over a period of time. But uh, but that being said, uh, we are really excited with this partnership that we have done with them to drive uh, the combo product in the market, which in many ways is first of its kind. And to your last question, Shreya, on the monthly performance numbers again, I think that's purely a function of uh, what kind of businesses do we write between periods. Uh, as we had explained even in the earlier call our business do tend to have a bit of cyclicality across businesses. Uh, so for example, in quarter one, you will obviously see a relatively higher proportion of some of the commercial lines being underwritten. In quarter two, we do see businesses booked, particularly in the context of crop. Now that per could get booked in a, in a particular month. And therefore, to that extent, you may possibly see variations in growth percentages uh, when you look at it relatively on a month-on-month -month basis. But here again, as we keep saying, I think a better way to look at, given the cyclicality of the business that we get, get to see, uh, maybe for example, quarter three, you will see a lot more uh, business largely driven through, let's say, some of the retail growth. Uh, so again, you may see, let's say, month-on-month -month changes between segments of businesses. Uh, but however, when you look at it on a full year basis, I think in line with what we have spoken, uh, largely looking at ways, looking at the way how, the, how things are positively shaping up for us, uh, we should definitely look at ending the year within that high teens percentage growth that we have talked about. And uh, in general, I mean, depending on what Sanjeev also mentioned, uh, on the expense of management side, I think if things start to get uh, improved much better from an industry perspective, then the relative outperformance that we have talked about of 100, 200 basis point over and above the market growth rate, that's something that we still believe we will be able to achieve. Got it, sir. Thank you. This answers my question. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Nidesh from Invest Tech. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, what is the share of OEM and the non-OEM business in the motor and how it has been trending over the last two to three years? OEM, uh, overall, if you see in our split in terms of the motor that they're speaking about, we would almost have 70% zero out of our business coming uh, from the OEM business and the rest would be coming through other channels with the agency and bank assurance. Sure. I think uh, uh, last year we articulated our intention to move towards, uh, to increase the share of non-OEM uh, by focusing on high loss ratio, low, low expense ratio uh, uh, business. Uh, so, how is the progress on that? Uh, has a share of uh, non-OEM going up? So, uh, overall, if you see, again, uh, the, uh, incrementally, yes, we intend exercising ourselves more on the agency side, but uh, the, the manner in which our motor book has got created, uh, there is a fair amount of contribution, and if we see an opportunity there, it's not one for the other. We continue to invest extensively on the agency business side, but that being said, OEM, where we have been working for years and have built a franchise, we will continue to drive that. Uh, so we need to look at both of, both of these in a, uh, in a, in a standalone layer. There are times when OEM contribution can go really up. I mean, uh, I mean, there's a season coming in quarter three. Obviously, you will find again OEM, you know, uh, probably showing a larger percentage. But that being said, agency business should continue to do well, uh, but relatively to put percentage pool would be a very uh, difficult option. It's not one for the other. So, Nidesh, just to add to supplement what uh, Sanjeev said, uh, I think uh, strategically and philosophically, while we are investing, there will be times when OEM will again come back up, right? So, if new vehicle sales increase, as has happened, I mean, as, as we said in the opening remarks, uh, I think the share of new vehicle sales has been very positive for us, and those are profitable pools. So, when we see those opportunities, we want to guard them. Sure, understood, understood. Secondly, I noticed that there is some change in the senior management personnel uh, structure. Uh, so, uh, if you can explain what is the rationale for that, 
and uh, what is uh, uh, this uh, emerging market uh, group? Uh, if you can uh, share some details on that emerging markets group. So, uh, effectively, it's a very minor change, not a significant change, but we have an experienced resource which has joined in, and uh, he's an expert in terms of driving the emerging market. So, we have pulled him in to report into uh, Alok, uh, which otherwise had a multiple reporting. So, we want to use the benefit of his presence in the system. So, uh, and uh, emerging market group is a, is a commercial lines or? Emerging market uh, 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 operates across uh, channels and business lines. Basically, this is the, you know, Bharat rather than the top cities, right? Yeah, so yeah. this is where, if you remember last year, we had done some, a little bit of, uh, you know, structuring change where Alok Agarwal, who was our ED looking after, after wholesale business, was given specific focus, uh, or given charge of that, uh, that market with specific focus. And we are investing and we are growing that business. Uh, so typically, let's say the top 40 cities would be not there, but thereafter it would be considered to be emerging. Sure, sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one or two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sanket Gora from Evendis Park. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, uh, my, my first question is that uh, whether whether you want to prepone your guidance of 102.5 uh, to be achieved because because X of CAT CAT losses, if I see you are almost there. Uh, uh, what what we have thought we will achieve it by exit of FI25. So, so, so just wanted to understand uh, uh, whether whether. Uh, given given the underwriting environment, you believe that could happen a little uh, quicker than expected. That's point number one. And, and second, within within the uh, this 102.5 or combined ratio improvement, uh, means the, the some uh, some weightage was expected to come from the opex part. But despite UOM, um, our opex compared to last year still still has been higher, or or uh, in one also it's higher. So just wanted to understand that EOM is uh, overall dragging the OPEX low, uh, higher or, or increasing the OPEX on the higher side or, or you believe uh, sanity will come and EOMs will, uh, expense ratios will improve for the sector as well. Sanket, uh, cut a bit of flag to the team, right? I mean, you are know, just you are delivering better than expected numbers uh, and that's what we want to continue to do. Uh, no change in guidance. As you know, the market is still very competitive. We've talked about where the combined issue for the industry is in terms of motor share, uh, motor segment. Uh, but clearly, I think over the last one year, the team has done a brilliant job in terms of, uh, uh, you know, significantly calibrating uh, the business as also building a lot of capability on the cost side, both on the claims and, and expense side. Uh, so I think, you know, we are, the team is doing really well, but there is no need to change guidance as we see it at this point in time. On the cost side, uh, I'll ask Gopal to answer. Yeah, so I think, uh, Sanket, uh, we will uh, we'll still continue to maintain what we have been kind of talking about, which is, uh, I think the businesses as always have to be looked at as what Bargo also just mentioned in response to the earlier one, which is we always look at the businesses from an overall combined perspective. Uh, because uh, different businesses would obviously have a mix of, uh, let's say, loss experience and, let's say, the expense uh, ratios as well. Uh, just to kind of uh, uh, look at the overall expense of management, specifically to answer your point, uh, first half of last year, our expense of management was at 27.3. Relative to that, if you look at our first half of this year, we are at about 26.9. Uh, so hence, to that extent, even from an EOM perspective, we have actually seen a uh, marginal improvement in line with what we definitely wanted to kind of drive it towards. And this is despite the fact that we continue to make our investments in those areas of building distribution on health agency, technology, some of the core transformation projects that we talked about. I think clearly we would want to continue to make those investments and hence to that extent, you may not suddenly see a big shift happening in so far as specifically in the context of the uh, expense ratio numbers are concerned. We will obviously drive uh, a, po a positive change. But having said that, I think we will directionally be more guided by the other objective that we have specifically spelt out, which got reiterated as we speak, which is the combined ratio objective of 102% is something that we want to achieve by the end of next year. So that's something that we want to clearly drive. And as I said, purely uh, the breakdown of expense is a function of loss and uh, expenses. Got it, got it. 
one just just last two questions or, or one question which is one data keeping typical loss ratio of retail health and group health uh, that that if you can share and second uh, just just wanted to understand this i l take care app six percent of g w p is is a uh, big big achievement so so um, how do you see this uh, to be contributing and 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 if you can give a color how much is uh, mix driven by motor and health in in i l take care app so so the number of 6% is the digital contribution uh, sanket the second point uh, second part of your question uh, so therefore to that extent that also includes let's say the business that we source through il take care act and as we have been talking about i think consistently whether you look at it on a year on year basis obviously there is a multiplier increase in so far as the premium that you are sourcing through il take care is concerned roughly about 3.7 times increase that we have seen uh, but even when you look at it on a sequential basis i think we have been able to kind of uh, grow the contributions coming in to that particular uh, 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 particular app so we are very very excited with the way how things are getting played out and uh, equally we are getting to see a lot more uh, product per customer in so far as the use of the app is concerned and that will continue to drive uh, both uh, volumes as well as let's say uh, value of premium in so far as the digital contribution is concerned Uh, to your first point, in so far as the breakdown of the loss ratios are concerned, I think for quarter two, uh, the breakdown of the overall health loss ratios into corporate health and retail indemnity. Corporate health loss ratios are at about 102 percent, and the retail health indemnity loss ratios are 66.6 percent. Now, this number, I think, when you when the numbers that we gave out for quarter one last year, corporate health was about 92.6, and the retail health indemnity numbers were 64.2. now obviously these numbers have to be looked at in the context of how do we see some of the loss incidences play out and particularly in quarter 2 we do they get to see a slight increase in a loss incidence primarily because it typically it's a monsoon season and we get to see a lot more increase in uh, health related ailments that we get to see and this is not specifically only for this particular quarter 2 even otherwise when you look at it even for the last year for example clearly we had seen an increase in the loss ratios are playing out between let's say a quarter 2 versus a quarter 1 uh, so hence in that sense i think we are pretty much uh, okay with the way how the loss experiences is playing out and as we had indicated in so far as the portfolio growth is concerned i think it is coming at a price at which we are comfortable with and uh, in the subsequent quarters we should start seeing some of these loss ratios getting normalized particularly in the context of uh, lowering down of loss incidences that we see in q3 and q4 just to supplement what gopal said you know and we talked about this in the past the entire thought process uh, and the uh, and the approach behind i'll take care was uh, consumer engagement right engaging with our customers be it uh, you know uh, the employer employee segment where the individual uh, is a potential retail customer or a retail customer b2c customer who comes on board and uh, and the approach that we are taking is that as we have more engaged customers they will renew better we will have cross sell opportunities and uh, hopefully the relationship will be more sticky so principally for us whatever business we get as long as it's viable we are not driving motor numbers or health numbers there it's a customer engagement app and uh, and and as an organization we don't want to split that number at this point in time to say okay this is my motor number this is my health number because it might drive us in a manner which is not customer centric uh, so uh, so as an organization we've been giving the numbers in terms of number of app downloads the total volume of cross sell and, up, and upsell business that we are doing which is something that we will continue to do thank you sorry to interrupt mr sanket goda may we request that you return to the question queue for follow up questions as there are several participants waiting for their turn thank you sir okay. our next question is from the line of swarna bukerji from bnk securities please go ahead hi sir thank you for the opportunity and congrats on a good set of numbers so uh, i'll again come back to uh, you know the motor loss ratios so uh, i i understand that what you have articulated in terms of uh, your experience uh, and maybe some releases that are coming uh, but just you know for a view of how the loss ratios are going to pan out uh, i mean say for in, in uh, motor tt uh, your loss ratios have been little bit fluctuating over quarters uh, right now that there has been a bit of a improvement going ahead if you can give some color for the full year how we should think about this number where it can sustain uh, same for od given that uh, you are you are picking up on growth uh, on the uh, od business and particularly private vehicle in the mix how 
confident would you be in kind of maintaining this kind of loss ratio so that is the first one and uh, second uh, in terms of the like investment income i just wanted to understand the uh, yield that you have shown uh, realized return is uh, uh, fairly strong i think slightly higher than what we have done in the past so is there certain uh, you know tactical bets uh, that have you know that have worked out which might not play out in the coming quarters uh, so and what kind of yield we can think about for the you know going ahead on a normalized basis So, so Swarna, on the first one, I think, uh, which is what I kind of responded uh, to the earlier one, uh, and one had kind of talked about the range at which we would be comfortable. So, one, I think, when we look at motor as a line of business, we obviously look at it again more from a combined perspective, which will be a combination of both the loss experience and, let's say, the expense ratios. And as what we just discussed, again, it will depend on what proportion of new business that we write because new typically comes with a relatively better loss experience and correspondingly let's say the expense ratios could slightly stay elevated and correspondingly let's say the older portfolios as we just discussed typically comes with a slightly high lr and let's say a relatively lower cost of distribution so honestly that will be a interplay that one one would get to see in so far as writing this book is concerned but having said that i think the range at which one would be comfortable to operate in the context of motor own damage is what i had kind of responded earlier which is in the range of between 65 to 70% depending on what kind of a business mix that we write in the in in the sort of proportion of uh, uh, new or let's say is the relatively older portfolio on third party again pretty much we have kind of talked about as what i responded obviously we should again not look at these numbers uh, particularly for quarters or let's say even on a half yearly basis Uh, you have to look at the numbers over a relatively longer period uh, so there again it will be a function of what uh, kind of uh, loss experiences that one sees but broadly i would say that one could see that third party loss ratios again kind of hovering around what you see on a full year basis uh, that would be largely representative of the range at range at which we would uh, get to see the loss ratio play out uh, so that's the response uh, to your first one uh, to your second one on the overall uh, investment book uh i think uh, in fact in the past quarters people have been asking us why have we not seen let's say so much of an increase in the overall uh, interest income of the portfolio uh now if you recollect i think what we generally do is uh, depending on the market opportunity that one sees is how we place our overall portfolio at and for example we tend to kind of in this high interest rate uh, environment we obviously want to capitalize the opportunity that one sees in so far as uh, accrual to the book is concerned and which is why our overall uh, duration of the book uh, in fact stands at about 5.23 years this number if i remember it correctly uh, at the end of the at the beginning of the year uh, was at about 4.99 years so obviously we have gone a bit long and we have kind of rightly positioned the portfolio in order to capitalize as i said the increased uh, uh, interest rates that one sees in the market uh, so hence to that extent we will obviously get to see this kind of play out even as we kind of head into the subsequent quarters what is it that you may not necessarily see playing out over the subsequent period is purely a function of the extent of capital gains that one sees in the market that's purely driven by let's say the market opportunity that one sees and even in the past we have talked about it uh, between quarters you can always see fluctuations in the breakup of the overall investment income uh, depending on how market plays out is what you will be able to see some kind of play- gains playing out so so hence to answer your point i think uh, the way we are position the portfolio is what is helping us in terms of capitalizing the uh, increased uh, uh, interest uh, income and just to just to uh, supplement the point that gopal made uh, uh, we've been talking about this that our uh, carry yield will increase and gopal given this number if you also look at the split of the unrealized gain the unrealized gain in the equity book has increased uh, at the end of this quarter uh, obviously on the uh, debt side and the bond side has come down because interest rates have gone gone up but that is not something that we worried about because these are all uh, calls that we've taken to stay long in uh, in the debt market that's how our yield has increased understood sir yeah but thank you so much for all the this thanks thanks so much thank you our next question is from the line of rishi junjunwala from iifl institutional equities please go ahead Yeah thanks for the opportunity just a couple of questions uh, uh firstly 
you know, this September month would have seen the first five-year anniversary of the two-wheeler long-term TP. Um, so how has the experience been in terms of renewal? It is, you know, given that five years of TP means that the renewals are pretty much down to zero. And, and as a result, uh, you know, if you can give some color in terms of what would, you know, that amount of premium for September month be as proportion of overall motor TP. So, uh, thanks, Ishi. Uh, clearly, yes, this was the first month. Uh, overarchingly, if you ask me, overall to the industry level, there's a good reason why I think Supreme Court did the verdict in terms of having long-term this. Uh, the retention rates uh, continue to be relatively on the lower side. I would not split in terms of the amount, but retention levels that we are seeing as a team right now is around 15 to 20%. Uh, the development of this uh, will happen over, uh, you know, summation of probably a quarter in terms of what are the two numbers because we'll have to pursue this uh, uh, with our own customers and see where we end up losing it. Uh, but, it's, uh, but it's something as a pool that we are very keen to be using all possible analytics to see if we can further sharpen our X and see that uh, we can drive these numbers. Uh, even if it's only TP, we'll be more than happy to ride this pool. Understood. And the second is uh, just on the total payouts to the distribution uh, channels, uh, you know, some of our uh, life insurance peers have talked about, uh, you know, industry-wide increase in payouts uh, to the distribution channels. Um, how has it behaved uh, for us uh, in the, the key banker partner channel as well as outside of that? Uh, in terms of the total payout, I understand there was, you know, uh, you know, categorization or reclassification, but just in terms of payout, has there been a demand for increase in payouts uh, for us? And uh, have you seen any kind of uh, anomalies in the industry otherwise? So uh, overall, if you see, for us as a company, expense of management has stayed within the range, uh, and in fact, it has come down uh, from a 27.3 to 26.9. Uh, so, frankly speaking, uh, there is no accelerated increase. But in certain pockets where we have seen a bit of an acceleration, you would see that dynamically we will go again to what our basic thesis has been. Uh, we will change where we can get uh, viable business uh, in terms of acquiring it. Uh, in a way, to some extent, you can see our motor market share also is reflecting that we had a calibrated growth. Uh, to fully maintain profitability over just uh, market share growth. So you can read uh, in terms of what's happening over uh, but overall we seem to be in control uh, at this point of time. Okay. Thank you so much. All the yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Praesh Jain from Moti Oswal. Please go ahead. Mr. Prayesh Jain, your line has been unmuted. You can go ahead. Yeah, hi. Hi, congratulations on the number. Uh, firstly, uh, you know, uh, I just missed the agency count number. Can you just repeat that, Gopal? Uh, it's about 1,22,000, which includes the agency that includes the point of sale distribution as well. So this was, it is 1,22,000. This number at the end of the uh, uh, period was about 1,13,000. 1, okay, okay. And just on the you know, previous question of... Uh, uh, Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Uh, Price Jen. Maybe request yeah. you to use your handset, please. As your audio is muffled, sir. Thank you. Is this better? Hello? Hello? Still, is your better? voice is slightly uh, more feeble, uh, Price. We can't hear you clearly. Sorry, I'll come back in the queue. Sorry. Thank you, sir. Our next question is from the line of Madhukar Lada from Novama Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good evening and congratulations on a good set of numbers. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, one, we are seeing a good increase in the crop business uh, that you're doing this year. What is the philosophy uh, behind that? Uh, I remember in the past you wanted to avoid that business and uh, I, I also know that you got this business again from Bharti. Uh, so is that only those states or are you also growing in some of the other states? Uh, so that's that's one. Second, uh, again, I'm just going back to the guidance of 102%. Given that your performance is 
uh, quite strong and you know for, in first half it fell short at 102.7 so uh, are you being a little bit too conservative over here um and uh, finally uh, <clears throat> you know most of the industry is uh, ahead uh, or sorry is not meeting the uh, eom uh, norms right now um you know so what regulatory action can we expect and, and what would you say uh, by when uh, will the regulator start looking at this and implementing this so guys uh, madhukar let me answer it in the same uh, sequence one on crop there is no change in philosophy as gopal had explained that uh, i think San, uh, sanjeev explained that there are certain months where you book a premium it just shows up in that quarter uh in aggregate our share of crop business which we had guided the market was to be was would be around 5% of total business uh, for the annual uh, business not on a quarterly basis and i think we'll stay uh, at the, at that kind of range we are not uh, significantly growing our crop book uh, in spite of the fact that we believe some players in the market are trying to do that because of the advantages that they get on uh, eum but philosophically we don't believe that's the right strategy right approach so we are not doing that uh, uh there was some uh, amount of booking in the kharif season because most of the business for us is uh, in the kharif market a uh, kharif period so it, it it's a bit higher in this quarter that's about all secondly most of the crop that we got is in the 80 110 uh, model uh, so it's a uh, reasonably well contained uh, business and our experience uh, in the last couple of years has been very reasonably positive uh, on the uh, approach that we had in terms of your question on uh, uh the combined ratio uh, coming to uh, the question on uh, combined i think most to add uh, you know whether we are being conservative that's your call you you take your own views about whether we are being combined uh, conservative uh, i think as i said the guidance should remain the same if you can outperform all of you should be happy uh, third in terms of the regulatory action uh, look it's not for us to talk about what the regulator will do Uh, but uh, at least we uh, hope and we think that uh, this time the regulator is very serious about this uh, at the same time this is not about a quarterly number that they are monitoring they will monitor they are given a leeway for a company on an annual basis uh, and my uh, my my sense is that at the end of the year they will look at who is improved and who is not improved and who is gone beyond uh, 30% uh so uh, i think it would be wise for most companies which are already running at higher than that number i think it would be wise for them to bring it under control but as i said it's not for us to talk about what the regulator will do that's a question that uh, in a sense your time will uh, give us the answer and you'll see what the regulator does thanks just a follow up on this sir are we seeing a heightened competitive intensity in the group health uh, segment also uh Uh, to sort of uh, meet the uh, year norms I, i think gopal answered that and you know in the first quarter we saw the market on group health to be better and we had a much higher share uh, this quarter we've seen some amount of uh, aggression and in fact we've seen some otherwise sensible companies buy very large chunky uh, group health businesses our sense is it's probably to manage the expense of management but at the end of the day business is not just about expense management business is about combined right so you have to do it in a manner which is sensible so uh, we'll be watchful uh, and we'll see what what happens but overall at this point in time we are quite comfortable with the group health business that we are writing got it uh, thank you and all the best thank you our next question is from the line of nishchin chawate from kotak institutional equities please go ahead uh thanks for taking my question uh just a small one uh you know when i look at the monthly uh, you know monthly figures for uh, motor tp business i was just curious that uh, you know did you do any transaction in the last month uh, you know just as something that you had done probably in the feb or march uh, month last year no nishun did not done any transaction perfect thanks that answers my question thank you thank you Our next question is from the line of Supratim Datta from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just wanted to understand a few things. So one, uh, the 0.48 billion uh, of you know NatCap losses. 
uh, which lines of business are those uh, attributed to? I think it's been largely some of this quarter uh, has been largely, let's say, uh, relatively retail. Uh, so we have had a higher proportion of uh, losses coming in from uh, the motor line of business. But equally, we have also had some amount of claims coming in even on the property side. Unlike quarter one, where relatively the uh, losses of roughly about 35 crores, which was the cat losses in Q1, that was largely property heavy uh, as compared to motor. Got it. And uh, within, so if I adjust for that NATCAT losses, then in the motor OD line, then that would result in the loss ratio being lower than 60%. Is that a correct assumption? And then uh, my follow-up question to that is, uh, you know, how sustainable is this loss ratio going forward? Uh, so, uh, so, Supratim, I had kind of already responded to that, but just to kind of reiterate, uh, again, and we will keep saying this and you will get to hear us from time and again, you should never look at quarterly numbers uh, and largely it is better to kind of look at numbers more on a yearly basis. Uh, just to kind of reiterate, on motor own damage, I think the loss ratio, depending on the kind of mix of business that we write in motor, we are comfortable at a loss ratio range between 65 to 70 percent. Uh, that's the range depending on what kind of business, mix of business we write. And on TP, again, it's better to kind of look at more annual numbers, uh, which is largely reflective of the loss ratio range that one would be comfortable writing. So hence, to that extent, whether you adjust it for the quarter to losses from CAT in the loss ratio, but if you do that on a simple basis, then obviously yes, the loss ratio will definitely look better than what the reported numbers are. But having said that, I think the range at which we are comfortable at is between 65 to 70 uh, percent. And what equally we need to remember is that uh, whatever be the amount of losses, I think we do have uh, appropriate uh, reinsurance support such that uh, if there is a very large uh, cat led event having an impact on the net that gets appropriately protected through necessary reinsurance arrangement. Got it. And just one last question. So on the fire side, there has been a slowdown in the second quarter. So just wanted to understand how much of this is due to uh, the IIB burn rate being removed uh, versus, you know, overall competition or, you know, you wanting to um, not write some kind of business. So just wanted to understand. On that, the experience as what we discussed at the end of, in the first quarter is the same, uh, which is that roughly about 5-6% reduction from the earlier rate, which is uh, better than what we had actually we had anticipated at the beginning of the year. We'll have to see if this holds. In terms of fires, there are you know maybe one or two large policies that have got moved from period to period, you know, uh, you know, and, and there's some uh, you know uh, policies which have earlier booked in this period which may have got moved, moved somewhere else. We should look at the numbers uh, with a longer uh, period rather than just a quarter. The only thing, just to add to that, I think having said that, I think if we look at uh, across segments on the commercial lines, I think we still continue to outperform the market. I think we continue to accrete market share uh, in fire as a line of business, or whether you take any of the other commercial lines, we continue to outgrow the market. Got it. Uh, thank you. That's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, that was the last question of our question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Bhargav Das Gupta for closing comments. Uh, thank you, thank you, everyone. Uh, I think all of you have been great support to uh, to the company and me personally, and I really want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for being uh, great analysts and, and investors in our company. Uh, <laughs> As I said earlier, uh, I'm hoping that you'll continue to engage with us as you have in the past. And uh, Sanjeev wants to have the last word. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think absolute pleasure and uh, really keen to interact with each one of you personally as in when uh, uh, your schedule permits. Uh, uh, nothing much to add, but absolutely in agreement with Bhargav that uh, we've had you know great inputs and discussions with all of you, and that continues. Uh, thank you so much, and let's meet up soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI, Lombard General Insurance Company Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.